So the next step is going to be coming up with all of the different decisions that matter most and to try to figure out which decisions um, are going to be the most interesting to model and which do you just have the most to say about. I'm really looking for insights and creativity in your papers, so you're going to want at least three, maybe up to five models, and there's going to be a lot more possible models in any given platform. So let's start out by thinking about the people's decision, because that's the fun part. Um, when you get up to thinking about platform decisions and investor decisions, um, then you're have, having to start talking about money and um, the downsides and the risks and the reasons it might not work and how you overcome those reasons. And that's fun too, but the funnest part of course is envisioning your platform and the decisions that'll make that work or not work. So um, I'll start by thinking about the possible choice of variables for the people. And of course with most platforms, in the platform world, um, engagement, some measure of engagement is going to be the key factor here. Engagement is really the new demand function. In platform economies, what matters is how much, um, how engaged are people, and that's going to determine how much money you can elicit from either everyone or a subset of the people. So, um, engagement. And um, we might think of this, we're just brainstorming here as the um, number of friends, number of friends you invite onto the platform might be some measure of engagement. Um, and of course, whether or not you pay for the premium version. So I'm going to envision this as being a little bit like Zoom, which has the premium version if you want um, access to longer videos. So do you pay or do you not pay for the premium? And of course, that's going to depend on the price of the premium and the specific factors involved with the premium. So we're kind of keeping in the back of our mind that the pricing of the premium is going to be a decision up here. As a matter of fact, since we're listing choice variables, let's just remind ourselves of that. Price of premium is going to be a choice variable for the platform. The platform is also going to have to determine the quality of the premium and the quality of the free version. Um, and quality is a very general term, so it might help sometimes to be more specific. So if I'm envisioning um, what, what the premium version gives me is access to longer um, podcasts that you listen to with your friends, um, I could have the length of time that's free be one of the choice variables here. And you might imagine there are a million different ways you could structure the quality of the premium um, and the quality of the free version. How you structure that will be um, part of your white paper that you're setting up for your platform. These are all interesting questions. You could go many different ways and I look forward to seeing what you all explore in your paper. But that's, I'm going to have the length of time for the free version be um, my distinguishing factor. All right, coming back down here, we have engagement, we have number of friends, we have paying for the premium. Now, going back to my original inspiration for this idea, I'm really thinking about I want people to be vulnerable with their friends. I think that leads to quality interactions and meaningful friendships. So the level of vulnerability that users have with their friends on this platform, that's going to be an important decision that people make when they interact with the platform that I want to build into the quality of the product. Because that's really what we're trying to sell here is like, meaningful interactions with your friends where you're vulnerable. Vulnerability level, um, and of course I believe that vulnerability depends on the risk you take, which depends on do you bef betray your friends, or are you fearful that your friends will betray you if you're vulnerable on the platform. So betrayal um, is one key reason we need blockchain for to make this work, I believe, and Betrayal is going to also be an interesting decision that we have to model. That's a decision the people and the users are going to be making. Now these are going to be, um, some of these are going to be binary variables. Betrayal, do you betray by posting um, something your friend has recorded privately or do you not betray? That's binary. We can handle both binary and continuous. I'm hoping at least one of your models will be continuous. Um, so level of vulnerability, that's definitely continuous. Um, whether or not you pay for the premium, that's going to be binary. And of course, the price, the premium, the premium's actual price, that's going to be continuous. So I have lots of both binary and continuous variables built into this structure. Um, let's see. 
Okay, so this is a pretty good list of the decisions that are going to matter most for the people interacting with the platform. I think this gets at what what is the product we're trying to sell. Now, I'm imagining these platform um, leadership team, the group of people who come up with this idea and are trying to make it happen, they know that it's going to require a huge investment to just create the technology in the first place. It's not quite zero marginal cost after that. You're going to need updates. You're going to need um, investments in trying out different rules, just like every business has an evolution over time, and that evolution requires um, hiring computer scientists and programmers and things like that. Um, but we do know there will need to be a huge investment before people can ever even interact with the platform. So we need to set up some way of getting our investors involved. And um, I'm going to give you a, a structure I've come up with, but I hope you come up with many different structures. If you want to use parts of my structure in your own models, that's completely fine. But um, I'm going to have something akin to... Um, something akin to shareholders, except it's not exactly shareholders, so I'm going to call it share purchasers. <laughs> um, and it, they're going to be able to buy this asset. And what the asset's going to do is it's going to guarantee you a, a certain percentage. In fact, um, what percentage? Uh, let me do. Um, so here's the asset. So a certain percentage of all revenues will go back to the investors. And what percent would that be? Well, that's a choice variable that these, the leadership team for the platform is going to have to come up with. So X is one of our important investor-related choice variables. So it's an asset that guarantees you that. But this isn't um, a classic business. And why isn't it a classic business? Because we are going to give people, the users of the platform, a vote in um, holding the platform accountable to their desires and needs. So we're going to have a voting system. How often does the vote take place? Well, that's actually a choice variable that the platform is going to have to decide. Um, so let's add that. So the frequency of the voting for the people. So the frequency of the voting for the people to hold the platform accountable that frequency is a choice variable, it's part of the platform structure, and this would likely need to be something that would be fixed, ideally in stone, before the platform got going. So maybe that's once a month, and maybe the people are going to propose different things to vote on, and then vote on which one to vote on, and then vote on that thing. So, I mean, even the structure of how this voting works, there's going to be a number of different choices involved, um, this, of course, is going to be contractually uh, enforced. And you could go deep into thinking about how this voting mechanism works. Um, for now, I'll just say frequency of voter uh, of voting. That's the one I'm going to put up here for now. But you know, of course, there's many different things you could model relating to voting of the users. But of course, now, this adds a complexity when we're thinking about the investors. Because the investors are going to say, wait a second, the users are just going to make a vote um, that's, that's basically this service is free from now on. Forget all the money the investors put in at the beginning. We like the free version as users. And so the fact that people can vote on this could screw over the, the investors deeply. Um, so the investors are not going to invest in that unless there's some kind of backstop that guarantees that they're not going to lose their money in that way. And the backstop I'm going to, to give is I'm going to say... Um, the investors get to vote on a veto. So this isn't a perfect veto, but um, if the, the investors don't like the vote that the people have made in their once a month, if that's our frequency voting session, the investors can vote to veto that. And if it's vetoed, um, then whatever the people have voted on will only go through if the people come up with the money to buy out the investors. That's basically the, the vision of this that I've got. And in which case, we have some decisions to make here <coughs> related to what I just described. Um, so let me just outline this as part of the asset. The asset. Okay, so I've just written up what I described this asset is like. We know that investors are guaranteed X percent of revenues. We know that investors can veto a vote that users have made when they're trying to get this platform to maximize their social welfare. 
But if the investors vote on a veto, so the majority of the, the investors say no to a particular governance change that the people have made, then the only way that that user vote goes through is if the users buy out the veto vote. And how, how much do they need to buy out that veto vote? Because that would be basically the people saying, we really want this platform, we really want it to look a little bit different, but we as people are gonna have to raise the money to buy out the investors if we want um, this new thing to go through. What, what price do they have to buy it out at? That's another variable, it's another choice variable for the platform management team to come up with when they're setting up these assets. Now, um, the platform management, they don't know how well these assets are going to sell. Um, and it could be that they don't get enough money in the beginning to, uh, to really finance the kind of platform that they think would actually be successful. So um, the platform managers are going to have to come up with some minimum amount of revenue from the assets that they believe is necessary to make the platform happen. And then if that doesn't happen, they can just build into a smart contract the investors get their money back and we won't undertake the building of the platform unless we reach X am Z amount of money. I've already used X and Y, so um, Z, and of course we're still on the platform, platform decisions. So basically all of the decisions up here are platform decisions. I should have used a different color for these because it's a little bit messy, but um, the decisions down here are the people's decisions. And then everything else on the board is the platform's decisions. Of course, the investors' decisions are really easy, right? The investors decide how much they're willing to pay for this asset um, and how much to invest in the company. So uh, that, that's a very simple, uh, simple decision, but of course you could model it just like you could model everything else. It depends on the opportunity cost of that money. It depends on the investors view of how good this plan is, how likely is, is it to grow um, this particular platform. So I, I just added another one, Z equals dollar investment. Z is the dollar investment that the platform needs to raise from the investors by selling these assets in order to undertake the investment um, of the platform. And this is, of course, an if-then statement. If we don't raise Z, then all of the people who bought the assets will get their money back and everything's off. Um, okay. So, um, so we've already got a big list of decisions that this platform is going to need to make. There's another category of decisions that will matter a lot. And this will matter in terms of whether the investors invest, it'll matter in terms of whether people engage, and that's how do the platform managers ensure the quality? How do they interact with these choice variables down here? They want more engagement, they want people to get their friends to sign up. Um, how do they make that happen? And that all depends on the quality of the platform. So quality is going to be a variable. Okay, I'm running out of space here, so I'm going to erase the government um, for now to make space for myself. But the main reason I have government here is government could be an enforcement mechanism. So one of the decisions the platform is going to have to make is how do they enforce the lack of betrayal? Like if someone betrays a friend and posts, um, posts their friend's vulnerable podcast to the public, how do you punish that to deter it? One way of punishing it could be to actually use the court system, to use the official legal system, and in which case the government would need to um, decide how much it's going to invest in enforcing that and how the, the contracts are set up between the platform and government. But that isn't a huge issue for not right now and I need the space on the board, so um, I'm taking the space. Okay, so I'm identifying three big factors that are going to determine the quality of the platform. And one of those, of course, is the initial investment. How, how much are you investing in making the user interface really nice and in making it just a really great experience to interact on the platform? So that's going to um, be a function of, uh, well, it, it's going to basically be how much are the investors paying for these assets? 
And of course, we know that has a minimum value of Z. We're going to need at least Z amount to even create this platform. But um, if investors believe in the idea and look at the white paper and think it's fantastic, then we could get a higher number than Z. So that's going to determine the quality of the platform. Um, the quality of the platform will also determine on the be dependent on the governance system. If the people have a really good relationship for holding this platform accountable to social welfare among the group of people using the platform, that's going to increase the quality, which could, of course, increase engagement. Because we know that engagement is a function of quality. Um, engagement's a function of quality. Um, number of friends you invite, that, that's a function of engagement. Um, and whether or not you pay for the premium version, that's going to depend on the quality. So how much the platform takes off depends on the quality. Quality depends on investment and frequency of voting. And then this other thing, which is unique to this idea, and it's what I'm exploring through the modeling process, is the enforcement of the betrayal. So I'm worried about people betraying each other on this platform and how... Um, how much fear people have that they're going to be betrayed by their friends by um, having their personal experiences, their personal vulnerable experiences exposed to the public. Um, that is going to determine the quality, it's going to determine the vulnerability. So basically vulnerability here depends on something related to the betrayal. It depends on people's perceptions of will they be betrayed. The more vulnerable, vulnerable people are, the better the friendships will be on the platform, the higher the quality. So the enforcement of the betrayal is going to be a decision the platform has to make to sort of make this thing work. And what are the options for enforcing um, betrayal? You're basically figuring out how do we punish people if they betray their friends. We know there's a watermark um, that's on the blockchain, so we can definitely figure out who leaked one of these vulnerable um, video, not videos, um, audio things, this is podcasting, who leaked it, but what do we do if they leak it? How do we enforce that? So I see three different options. One of course is the government option, which I've already talked about. You could use a legal system, you could sue them, um, you could put them in jail, but that's probably not really on the table. A second option, which is very common among people thinking about blockchain platforms, which is you could get someone, get people to stake money, and if you betray them, you lose that money. But that doesn't really work either. Um, for one, because like, how much money would you need to stake for that to be a, a, a meaningful disincentive? And also, when do you get the money back? Because once you get the money back, there's no longer any incentive to not betray a friend if you got mad at them, for example. So um, the, the money version of enforcing the betrayal thing, that doesn't work that well either. So then you have to start thinking about um, what if you, if someone betrays them, do you just post all of the podcasts of the person who betrayed them? Well, that gets into some other issues because if it's two people talking, um, two people are being vulnerable, so you're kind of punishing someone who's innocent. And um, you might imagine there's going to be a whole series of things you have to think about in the way you set up the contracts to enforce non-betrayal. And those would be really fun to model. So in general, I hope you get a sense for how to start thinking about what are the choice variables you might use in setting up these contracts what variables might be in common, might link the different um, optimization problems of the users, of the platform, and of the investors, and of the government, depending on what your use case is. And I hope this just structures how to brainstorm the different models that might be relevant. So if I'm trying to figure out, I'm writing a 10 to 14 page paper, and I'm trying to figure out which of these models would be most interesting and important to model, um, of course, I'm, I definitely want to pick a couple down here because these are the fun ones. These are what are unique to my particular use case. So I might pick, um, I might pick the vulnerability and betrayal. This is two, two different models. And of course, engagement I know is going to be um, important. Um, the paying for the premium version, that's probably an important one. So I already have three interesting models to model. I come up and I look at all of these models. The enforcement of the betrayal is also unique to my use case, so I might want to model that one. And then I might want to choose one of the investor, um, one of the investor 
decisions here. So maybe the dollar amount to uh, to buy out for users to buy out the investors in a in a vetoed vote because that's kind of an interesting way that I'm structuring my platform to make it work for the investors. And of course, um, the investors are going to pay something for this. If they believe that there's any potential in this idea, um, they might pay for that. So in any case, I've just picked out one, two, three, four, five, five different models that would be really fun to set up a model for, pretty easy to set up a model for. And these models are going to have interactions between the different players. And that's what I hope you do with your papers. That's what, that's what I'm excited to see you showing off your thinking about the different players involved through the modeling process.